Let's get started. Start with listening and then learn new words and practice them in sentences. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where every choice seems wrong and yet you must make a decision? Welcome to the intricate world of ethical dilemmas, a crossroads of morality where every path is fraught with questions of right and wrong. These dilemmas are not confined to grand philosophical debates, but permeate our everyday lives, shaping our decisions and actions. Imagine, for instance, the complexities of choosing between loyalty to a friend and adherence to the truth, or the tough decisions medical professionals must make when resources are scarce. These are ethical dilemmas, and they require us to navigate a labyrinth of morality and consequence. For those learning English, the ability to discuss these dilemmas is paramount. Not only does it enhance your vocabulary, but it also sharpens your critical thinking, enabling you to express nuanced views and engage in sophisticated debates. Understanding and navigating ethical dilemmas is a critical skill in today's complex world. To navigate these tricky situations, we first need to understand the frameworks for ethical decision-making. Ethical decision-making is often guided by a few key philosophical frameworks. Let's delve into them one by one. First off, we have utilitarianism, a consequentialist theory that suggests the most ethical choice is the one that will produce the greatest good for the greatest number. It's about maximizing happiness and minimizing suffering. If you're choosing the path that results in the most overall happiness, then you're thinking like a utilitarian. Next, we have deontology. Unlike utilitarianism, deontological ethics aren't concerned with outcomes. Instead, this framework focuses on duty, rules, and moral obligations. For a deontologist, it doesn't matter if lying would result in a better outcome. Lying is inherently wrong, and that's the end of the discussion. Lastly, let's talk about virtue ethics. This framework emphasizes the role of one's character and the virtues that one's character embodies for determining or evaluating ethical behavior. Instead of focusing on what we should do, virtue ethics asks how we should be. So if you're trying to decide what to do in a tricky situation, you might consider what a virtuous person would do. These frameworks provide a useful starting point for understanding ethical decision-making. However, it's important to remember that they aren't one-size-fits-all solutions. Each framework has its strengths and weaknesses, and none of them can provide a clear-cut answer to every ethical dilemma. In the real world, we often have to blend these frameworks. We might consider the consequences of our actions, like a utilitarian, while also thinking about our duties and obligations, like a deontologist. And we might reflect on our character and virtues, like a virtue ethicist. In the end, ethical decision-making is a complex process that requires critical thinking, emotional intelligence, and a solid understanding of these philosophical frameworks. Remember, the goal isn't to find the right answer. Instead, it's about understanding the different perspectives, weighing the pros and cons, and making the best decision we can with the information we have. These frameworks provide a starting point for understanding and discussing ethical dilemmas. Let's delve into an infamous ethical dilemma known as the trolley problem. This dilemma is a classic thought experiment in ethics, and it goes like this. Imagine a runaway trolley is heading down a track where it will hit and kill five people. You are standing by a lever that, if pulled, will divert the trolley onto another track where it will kill only one person. The question is, would you pull the lever? The trolley problem presents us with a difficult moral choice. Do we prioritize the many over the few, or do we refrain from action because intentionally causing harm, even for a greater good, is morally wrong? If you choose to pull the lever, you're aligning with a framework known as utilitarianism. This approach to ethics suggests that the most ethical choice is the one that provides the greatest good for the greatest number. So, in this case, sacrificing one life to save five would be the utilitarian solution. However, if you decide not to pull the lever, you might be aligning more with deontological ethics. Deontologists argue that the morality of an action is based on whether that action itself is right or wrong, regardless of the outcome. So, for a deontologist, intentionally causing harm to someone, like diverting the trolley, is inherently wrong, even if it leads to a better overall outcome. Then there's virtue ethics, which focuses less on rules and consequences and more on moral character. A virtue ethicist might ask, what would a virtuous person do in this situation? The answer could vary greatly depending on the individual's perception of virtue, adding another layer of complexity to this dilemma. The trolley problem doesn't have a universally correct answer. 
It serves to illustrate how different ethical frameworks can lead to different solutions and how our personal values and perspectives shape our moral decisions. As we can see, each ethical framework can lead to a different solution to the same dilemma. Now consider another complex ethical dilemma known as the lifeboat scenario. Envision yourself in a lifeboat that can safely hold only five people. However, there are six people aboard. If no one leaves, the lifeboat will sink and everyone will perish. The question is, who should leave the boat? This is a quandary that brings us face to face with ethical theories of utilitarianism, deontology, and virtue ethics once again. From a utilitarian perspective, the goal is to maximize happiness for the greatest number of people. In this case, one could argue that the person who contributes least to the overall happiness or well-being of the group should be the one to leave. Perhaps this person is causing conflict or tension, or maybe they are physically weaker and less able to help with survival efforts. However, deontology would have us consider duties and rights. According to this ethical framework, it may be wrong to ask anyone to leave the boat as it would violate their right to life. The deontologist might argue that it's better for all to perish together rather than for one person to be sacrificed. Meanwhile, virtue ethics focuses on character and moral virtue. A virtue ethicist might consider who among the group embodies virtues such as bravery, selflessness, and sacrifice. Perhaps the one who voluntarily leaves the boat, demonstrating these virtues, is the most ethically correct decision. But then again, is it fair to expect anyone to make such a sacrifice? Should the decision be made by drawing straws, or should it be a collective decision? These questions further complicate the dilemma. As with the trolley problem, there's no universally agreed-upon solution to the lifeboat scenario. It's a situation that forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about survival, sacrifice, and the value we place on human life. It also highlights how our ethical framework can lead us to very different decisions. Again, our ethical framework significantly influences our decision. As we have seen, ethical dilemmas are complex and challenging. They push us to question our deepest held beliefs and to wrestle with difficult decisions. Throughout our journey, we've explored the intricate landscape of moral quandaries, delving into the frameworks that help us make sense of them. From utilitarianism's emphasis on the greatest good, to deontology's steadfast commitment to duty, and virtue ethics' focus on moral character, each offers a unique lens through which to view these dilemmas. Our exploration of the trolley problem and the lifeboat scenario served as practical applications of these theories, stimulating thoughtful discourse and encouraging a deeper understanding of these ethical challenges. By discussing these issues in English, we've not only expanded our vocabulary, but also our capacity for critical thinking. Remember, the goal isn't always to find the right answer, but to engage in meaningful dialogue and consider multiple perspectives. With these tools in hand, you are now better equipped to navigate, discuss, and understand complex ethical dilemmas. Let's learn new words and practice English at level C2. Ethical Dilemma Ethical Dilemma, a situation in which a difficult choice has to be made between two or more actions, each of which could have moral implications. Example, an ethical dilemma often arises when a doctor must choose between saving one patient at the risk of harming another. Moral Ambiguity Moral Ambiguity, a situation in which the ethical action is unclear or where the moral aspects are mixed making it difficult to discern the right course of action. Example, moral ambiguity often complicates decisions in international relations where interests and values may conflict. Principle-based ethics. Principle-based ethics, an approach to ethics that focuses on the adherence to moral principles, such as justice, fairness, and rights, rather than on the consequences of actions. Example, principle-based ethics would dictate that all individuals should be treated equally, regardless of the outcome. Consequentialism Consequentialism, a philosophical theory that assesses the rightness or wrongness of an action solely based on its consequences. Example, in consequentialism, the end justifies the means, so actions are deemed ethical if they lead to positive outcomes. Virtue Ethics Virtue Ethics, an approach to ethics that emphasizes an individual's character as the key element of ethical thinking, rather than rules about the acts themselves or their consequences. 
Example, virtue ethics focuses on being rather than doing, so a virtuous person will naturally act in a moral way.